So I'm recording this on Friday night. I just got back from the New York Comic Con. Uh, and if you didn't watch my prior video on my plan, you should watch the video on the plan now. I'll put a link up here and then come back to this one. But I can tell you right now, if you don't go back and watch that one right away, I can tell you right now, the plan didn't go quite as expected, but I got some great comics, a ton of them, most of them for $3 each and filled out a lot of the runs of uh, different series that I was looking to uh, fill out. So if you want to check it out and see, plus some freebies and some uh, uh, AOKs that I got, stay tuned for the video. Anachronic. Hi, comic fans. I'm Joe, and welcome to Anachronic Comics. So before I begin, yeah, I had a little accident here, not with the razor. Um, Actually, an accident that could have been worse, but it turned out to be okay. So I got a little bit of a scrape here, uh, but everything is cool. Everything is good. So try to avoid focusing in on this as I speak to you. <laughs> anyway, first, let me start off by saying that um, uh, I did have a plan and I did succeed on some of the plan, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. But one of the big things about New York Comic Con is that I was able to meet some of my pals, some of the uh, uh, YouTube pals, uh, some Gibbon Gan members as well. And I'll be showing some of those pictures uh, as we go along. Um, actually, let me just say right now, I, get, I did get to meet um, Izzyverse, NYC. He was there, we hung out for a while. Um, I did see DJ Lynx, um, and he took a video of me for his channel. So maybe you'll see me popping up there when he does some uh, New York Comic Con related uh, videos. I saw a comic journey. We hung out for a bit. Uh, and uh, Izzy and uh, CJ were with me at a great DC um, uh, panel, uh, which I took so many pictures and was so great. I might do a separate video just showing those pretty much about the absolute universe and the changes and some stuff that was only shown, uh, was shown for the first time uh, there at New York Comic Con. Uh, which is pretty cool. But, you know, I went there on Thursday and my intention was to get some um, signatures, included, including were signatures uh, for a number of different books that I had in mind. I'll start off right away with the failures. <laughs> this was a failure. Okay. This was a failure. Uh, Chris Claremont was there. But his lines were consistently like about 50, 60, 70 people long. And he engaged in conversations with people. Um, Frank Miller, um, first of all, he wanted 80 bucks. But although he was advertised to be there, um, they said he's only going to be there on Sunday for a couple of hours. So I'm not going to be there on Sunday. So I decided to bring the Wolverine stuff home. Now, another one that I was looking to get done and only partially got done was this very nice looking, very good condition, uh, Batman number six, the Court of Isles book, All right? So you see there is a signature on that and that's the signature of Greg Capullo, very nice guy. Uh, spoke to him a little bit about this. We talked a, bit, a little bit about how he came about with this and, and so forth and um, um, it was like a good conversation. So although Scott Snyder was supposed to be there, he wasn't. They said he will be there on Friday. So I said, okay. So I brought it back with me today, right? So when I get down there, um, I get in line and they said, well, we, we've already filled up what we think he might be able to get done. He's only going to be here for uh, uh, like three hours, three and a half hours. Uh, so could you come back in half an hour? We'll have a better idea because he's going to start in a few minutes, have a better idea as to whether or not we can add. So I said, okay. I went up, I spoke with the um, uh, some of my um, uh, Gibbon Gang buddies, uh, the Bratton brothers, Dave and Doug, for a while. Uh, I saw Izzy, you know, we spoke with Izzy a bit. I saw DJ for a bit. Then I went back downstairs. And she said, oh, and this is now getting close to noon. Saying, oh, he just started. He just got here. So we really don't know whether we can add any more people. Um, it's a fire hazard. It's this and that. Could you come back in 30 minutes? And I said, I'm Italian. I did something like this. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not coming back. So I don't have Scott Snyder. He was very good at the uh, at the DC panel, but I don't have Scott, Scott uh, Snyder's 
uh, signature on this. So it's going to have to wait for another day. I do want to try to get it if I can, but I don't have it right now. Okay. So what else did I get? Well, I did get Chip Sadarsky, really nice guy, uh, on this Howard the Duck second print with Gwenpool appearance. Um, we spoke a little bit about this. So, um, uh, Milt, if you're watching this and you don't have this second print, uh, and if you don't have this signature, let me know. I'm happy to send it off to you, my friend, right? Matter of fact, I'll probably send it off to you anyway, all right? So a little gift for you, uh, Howard the Duck with Chip Zdarsky's, uh, it's not even a signature, really. It's just it says Chip, I think, if you could see it, stretched out there, all right, um, and on Aunt May's uh, skirt. So really cool. All right. Nice guy. I took a pretty cool picture with him too. <coughs> and, uh, uh, just really, really nice, nice man. Um, now this is strange tales. Number one fifty nine from 19. I don't know. When is it from? <coughs> Hold on. Oh, I take a look. I've forgotten when it was from what the date was. I'll take it out anyway so you can see a little bit better. Um, it's from 1967, all right? And um, here it is, all right? And if you could see there who signed it, yep, Starenko. Starenko charges $50 for a signature. Pretty significant. He does not let you take a photograph of him. But I did take a photograph of him from far away. I asked his handler, would he let me take a photograph of him signing the book? Nope. <laughs> no. He says, you can ask him, but he's going to say no. All right. So what's the story behind this? Well, it's one of my favorite Strange Tales um, books from the comics my mom let me keep that I kept. I just love this cover all the time. We spoke a little bit about this. Um, we spoke a little bit about Hulk Annual Number 1 and the Marie Severin uh, doing uh, Hulk's face, which I'll tell you about in a second. But here, um, what happened was that I think it was Stan Lee, he said, did not want him to draw um, uh, Captain America, All right? So he got uh, John Romita, who had been drawing it, to draw Captain America on this. So he said he had drawn Captain America, they took it out, and they put Romita's Captain America in there. Obviously, he did the rest of it. So I told him, okay, sign. Uh, sign underneath uh, Nick Fury, then, since that was yours. All right. But I heard about this and he confirmed it. So it's pretty cool. He he looked at it, he goes, oh, this was a well-loved book. And sure it was. If you could see the top, you know, this is one of the books. I told him, I said, I don't know how many people might have read this book, but it ended up with me, you know. And I told him, I said, you already, said, you already had Starenko down at the, where is it? That Starenko over here. I said, but that doesn't count. He goes, yeah, now it's official. Now it's official. He was a nice guy, but boy, is he a talker. He had um, a young artist there, a young girl going to the Cooper School. And we were waiting online, about six or seven of us. And she was he was talking to her for like, you know, and she was showing him like pictures and things like that on, on her iPad that she had drawn. He like got lost in that entire conversation, you know. And so finally, he like kind of looked up and said, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh I, I got to get some of the other people. Then he spoke to her for another 10 minutes before he let her go. You know, so I was, I maybe was with them maybe three minutes or four minutes together, but really cool to have him there and very nice guy. Uh, certainly will engage you in conversation. So that was the extent of my plan and the results of my plan. All right. Now, I also mentioned that there were some books that I was looking for and, uh, you know, like a, a two issue, I think two and four of, um, of Doc Savage magazine. I couldn't find one anywhere. Really strange. A lot of Conan magazines, you know, but no, no Doc Savage that I found anyway. Um, I also said that I would be looking for some, uh, for two issues of Metamorpho volume one that I was still missing. Didn't get them, unfortunately, but I got a lot of other cool stuff. And I got some other signatures that I wasn't expecting to get. So why don't we take a look? And this is going to take a while. All right. First of all, I want to thank Doug excuse me. First of all, I want to thank Doug Bratton. Um, I am a big believer and a supporter of his, um, isolation comic book. 
Um, and he just had a Kickstarter where he had the trade of the first part, which were four issues that I supported. And I have pretty much almost every issue that came up, uh, all the varying covers uh, from issues one through four. I might be missing one or two, I don't know. But he knew I was missing this one. This is from, I believe, number two. And he brought it for me. Very nice. Say, okay, thank you. So that's great. So I'm going to put that with the rest of my collection. Then Dave Bratton, fantastic, really great artist also, recently posted, I think, on IG. And if you follow him, it'd be great. He went to a Smallville con, I guess, where all the Smallville um, actors were there. So he, well, he spoke to all the actors, you know, but especially spoke to Tom Welling, who played Clark Kent, uh, who became Superman, basically, in the, uh, in the last season. Um, and, you know, Dave is a tremendous Superman fan. And so he actually drew and then had printed and put together a variant cover, I guess you want to call it, of Superman number 317. That's when he's all green. It's a Neil Adams um, uh, cover, um, uh, really, really great cover. So he reproduced it, and he had Tom Welling there instead of the Superman that Neil Adams drew. And uh, I saw him, he showed me this, you know, uh, he showed me, you know, he gave it to Tom and he signed, Tom signed one for him and all that. So he brought one for me and he signed it. Look at this. Isn't that great? Look at this. A great reproduction of uh, Superman number 317. And he signed it for my super friend, Joe. Uh, Brent. So I really fantastic stuff. Look at that. I'm trying to get that glass out of there. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Went out and I bought this uh, plus thing to put it in right away because I figured it would get destroyed <laughs> if I didn't be if I didn't do that. Okay, so that was really really good. Now before I get to the signatures that I got, I got a ton of comic books to show you. The only two now I paid five dollars for one comic book and I think three dollars for everything else except for these two. You know, I'm a great Adam Hughes fan, and I paid ten bucks a piece for these. Um, this was a one shot from IDW, uh, the Rocketeer, and I just love that. He's got a Dave Stevens down here. I got to look this up. I'm not sure why it's there unless it was just, he basically did it as an homage to Dave Stevens and put that in there. But look at that. Isn't that great? So this was 10 bucks. This was the most expensive comic book along with the other one that I bought when I was there. Okay. And the other one was this really cool Fall of X, um, uh, I guess, number one, a variant edition um, with the Scarlet Witch on it. But look at that. I mean, I just love the way that he draws some of these women and stuff. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I think that's kind of my rabbit hole here. I'm going to be looking for um, Adam Hughes. And he was supposed to be there, um, but he, I guess he... Um, didn't. Oh, and I forgot to, uh, you know, and, and I forgot to tell you too that um, I did want to get um, uh, Superior Spider Man number one and uh, Amazing Spider Man number 700 uh, signed. Although he was slated to be there, Don Slot never made it. And then we looked it up and he actually canceled his appearance for the entire week. So um, I, I could have got Ryan Stegman, I guess, on there because he had he on uh, Superior Spider Man because he had drawn it, but. I just brought it back home and said maybe some other time. Uh, so that was a little that was a little bit disappointing, frankly. Okay, so what did I get? I got a ton of books that helped me with my my Jack Kirby DC collection, right? I got one Forever People number five. Okay, but the real <laughs> kick that I made was on Commandy. Commandy went for about fifty six issues, if I remember correctly, it, it was in the mid fifties. And I had maybe, you know, a couple of handfuls of them, but I managed to find again, $3 a piece, all of these commandy issues, commandy number three. And these are from various stores, Zap Comics, Liberty Comics, a bunch of different stores that were there. Commandy number 13. Commandy number 14. Uh, 
Command D number 16. I'm telling you, just put a big dent in that in that command D run. Command D number 17. Command D number 18. And they're all in really good shape. Command D number 19. Command D number 21. Command D number 23. Command D number 24. Command D number 25. Yep. Command D number 26. Are you counting these? Because I don't know how many books I bought. Command D number 27. So even at $3 a piece, I did spend some money on this. Command D number 29. Command D number 31. Command D number 39. Command D number 41. Command D number 43. Command D number 45. Command D number 49. Command D number 51. Command D number 53. And last but not least, commanding number 55. $3 each. I just, and this was, I got those from probably three different stores. Um, one guy I actually had was like uh, seven books for $20. So I think it's kind of a little bit less than $3. Some of the others were just $3 as well. Um, okay. So what else did I pick up? Well, I don't know if you know about this series. I got to do a couple of videos on it. But Mark Wade had done a series about two different superheroes. This was from Boom Studios. Uh, one of them was called Irredeemable. And that was about a superhero who went bad. Okay. Kind of a Superman type of superhero. It's a little bit like the boys. And the other one was Incorruptible. That was a guy who was a super criminal that then became a superhero. And I got these two because I was reading these. And as I went through and put them into CLZ, I realized I was missing one of each. You know, one Irredeemable and one Incorruptible. And these are the two I was missing. I happened to find them. So now I have the complete runs. Okay. Now, you guys also know I've been looking at Doc Savage, and I was able to come up with a number of Doc Savage books to help with my Doc Savage run. So here's Doc Savage number one from a DC run. Doc Savage number two. Here's a Doc Savage. I don't know what it's from and who it's by. It's the Man of Bronze. I'm going to have to look this up. It has a big number one there too. So I'm not sure who did this or what, though the the trade looks like a DC trade. But it's a new one for me. Okay, this is then, I think, the 1987-88 run by uh, O'Neill and Kubert. Number two. Oh, this was a this was a four issue series. This is number two. Here's number three, and here's number four. Unfortunately, couldn't find number one. Okay, then this other series is a later series of which I don't really have too many, but I managed to pick up these. These I think this was uh, might have been ninety or ninety two. Forget. Another DC one. So here's number 21. 
number 22, again, in great shape. Number 23, and that was it. Now, um, I'm also trying to find uh, finish my collection of Mr. Miracle, and I did manage to find one book I didn't have, number 19. And I found a, um, a Metamorpho from their 1993 DC series, uh, which I didn't have any, and I found number one. Okay, so that's that. Now some disparate ones. Uh, you know, you, you, you go through, it's like three bucks, right? So if it's three bucks, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, so I got a couple of uh, Marvel Milestone editions that I, I might actually throw in. Um, I'm putting together the mystery boxes uh, for C3. I got finally got the names a few days ago, uh, just before I went to uh, the New York Comic Con. And I know some people that like X-Men and so forth. So I picked these two up and they might be included in some of the boxes that... Um, uh, that I already put together, I'll just throw these in. One is Marvel Milestones Edition X-Men number one, first issue. And the other one is uh, Marvel Milestones Edition Giant Size X-Men. All right, two cool books. I don't have either. I've had the original X-Men from number two on, but not number one. All right, what else did I pick up? Okay, now some disparate ones. Uh, Gold Key, The Man from Uncle. Right. I have a few of these. That's kind of cool. And uh, I have one or two of these, and I saw these. Uh, I don't think I have them, so I picked them up. Um, Forbidden Worlds from uh, American Comics Group, ACG. This is uh, number number 104. It's a 12 center. Not sure of the year. All right. And Forbidden Worlds number 127 with Magic Man on the cover. I have uh, one of these, DC Superstars of Space. Um, it might even be this one. I don't know. But for $3, I picked it up anyway. Remember, it was 7 for 20 So I was filling in some of these... Uh, some of these runs, you know, by picking out some of these things. Um, oh, and here's another. Um, this is an interesting one. DC and Marvel present the Uncanny X-Men and the New Teen Titans, a collector's edition crossover. And finally, I've got a few of these. Space War by Charlton. Very cool. Uh, Steve Ditko did the cover, did most of the insides on these. Okay, so I don't know if you counted the comics. I haven't. All right, final comic book area on this. Um, I like Ghost Machine. I don't buy too many new comics anymore, the actual paper comics. I read a lot of them online. Um, but Ghost Machine, I really like, and I started to buy them up. I actually got some Hyde Street there. I have had one here, but let me show you what I did. A lot of people going nutto on this. I didn't quite go that crazy. All right. But I didn't have Junkyard Joe, Junkyard Joe number one. So I picked it up there and I had it signed. All right. So they would tell me, oh, do you just want Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, and Brett Anderson to sign? I said, nah, make everybody sign. <laughs> so everybody signed it, you know, because it was at their signing for Ghost Machine. And uh, let me take this out because it's got tag on it. It's got some other stuff in the back. So I had them sign Ghost Machine. Right. And I didn't know they were going to be there. So I didn't bring my copy. I bought this one. It was like five bucks. All right. Which is the, the cover price is $4.99. So I had them and they're all, they all have signed this. Uh, they apparently, they some of them decided to sign everything in black. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess we can go through them and try to figure out who, who you know, who's who on that. But I had a nice conversation even with um, uh, Jeff Johns a little bit about that, about uh, uh, Stargirl. So on the first day, they actually gave me a ash can of Hyde Street. 
and Devour, which is going to be a new one that's kind of come out. It's, it's a one shot. So Hyde Street is here. And um, I actually got the next day another one, which I had signed. This was uh, during a special, excuse me, this is during a special Hyde Street um, signing. So I got it signed by Jeff Johns, Ivan Reese, Denny Mickey, Rob Leahy, and Brad Anderson. They're the ones who put it together. And uh, Madel Zucht was there, and she's the one who actually wrote Devour, which is going to come out on October 30th. It's a one shot. So I had her sign this ash can. You can see it down, or is it down here? MZ. Okay. And I had a nice discussion with her, very nice woman. And she said she actually, uh, during the third season of Stargirl, had written some of the episodes. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I got this other ash can, which is the Rocket Fellers, which is coming out. And the other side is Hornsby and Hal. So that's kind of cool getting those. So um, Hyde Street, I have the A cover over there. I haven't read it yet. They said, did you read it? I said, not yet. I have it there on my desk. But I got a, I got the, I think this is the B cover. And again, I had it signed by the uh, uh, five um, um, creators that were here. So this is a pretty cool cover that they signed for me. And this was, when I saw this cover in the store, it was one of my favorite covers. This one actually cost me $20 as well. So it was a $20 book. Um, the other one was just, um, was like, uh, four bucks, right? So this one, and I had them all sign it as well. Um, it's really because of the Boy Scout in there, because I have a history with the Boy Scouts. And, uh, the funny thing about it was that, um, Brad Anderson, who I spoke to and, you know, was the artist on this. We had a little bit of a conversation about the Boy Scout. And he told me, he goes, yeah, well, I was an Eagle Scout. And I said, well, yeah, my son was an Eagle Scout too, but I wasn't, I didn't make it, but he did. So we spoke a little bit about scouting and he, about how we researched the um, uh, the uh, uh, uniform because he wanted to kind of try to make it as accurate as he could based on what he understood before and what they're doing now. So it was a nice conversation about his, you know, researching and trying to get it as accurate as we can. Okay. So that's that one other thing. Um, Comic Journey, CJ, is involved in a project that's going to be launched on Kickstarter. And it's called The Shift, The Shift Project. And it's a really cool concept. There is a script that was given to four artists. CJ is one of them. And uh, they each are going to interpret the script in their own way. Sounds pretty interesting to me. So it's going to be, this is the bootleg version here at Comic-Con. So um, take a look, be on the lookout for it. It's called The Shift, all right? And I think it's be kind of cool to help support them on that. Okay, so that's it. I had a big haul, got somewhat successful in my, in my plan, but not entirely, unfortunately. But I am going to do a separate video, I believe, if it works out for me on the DC um, Absolute Universe um, uh, uh, panel, because I think that was pretty cool watch, seeing some of the stuff that's there. So I'll try to get that done in the next couple of days. But thanks for watching, guys. I know it was a little bit long, but man, did I get a bunch of different things here. <laughs> All right. So if you, and again, if you want to see any of my other um, uh, videos on New York Comic Con, just make sure that you click on this. Be well, and I'll see you soon.